Once you guys got another video on what to do first when you buy a mini PC. This is GMK Tech. This is the Nutbox K8 Plus. This is a Ryzen 7 8845HS. And again, this has been sent to me by GMK Tech. But I thought I'd make a video showing you how I would go about doing it myself. So this is everything you're going to get inside the box for this particular mini PC. You're going to get your power adapter, your VESA mount, your warranty card, and also you're going to get your power brick and your power adapter, HDMI cable, and the mini PC itself. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I would do myself if I was buying one of these. So the first thing I'll do is uh, remove this top part and gain access to inside and check all the hardware. And also I might want to upgrade some of the hardware inside by adding a uh, NVMe drive in here. On the front, we do have our ports here. This is the Oculink PCI Express 4.0 times 4 We have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on here. And we also have USB 4.0 port that does support PD, DP, and also data. And we also have on the front here, the power button and the 3.5 audio. So I'm gonna quickly have a look on the sides. We've got some ventilation here on the back. This is where all the main ports are as well. So we have two USB ports and we also have HDMI 2.1, which is 8K at 60 Hertz. Display port is 2.1 at 8K at 60 Hertz. We have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, Type-C port, which is your USB 4.0, that supports PD, DP, and data. And we have the Kensington lock on here as well. So let's gain access to this. You just twist this top part and this will gain access to inside. So we can upgrade the memory if you wanted to, or even add another NVMe drive inside these devices. There is the actual uh, fan right there, which is gonna keep the unit nice and cool. And because we can remove the top very easily, that means we can clean the fan to do maintenance. It's held on with these four little plastic lugs here and you just twist it and it locks it into position. So I'm gonna remove four screws here so we can gain access to inside. And this is how easy it would be to basically upgrade your mini PC. Now, all mini PCs are gonna be different the way you access them. But normally it's either on the bottom with four rubber feet, you remove those, or it's from the top like this one. So we're going to gain access to this. Now be careful because there is a ribbon there connected to that fan. And that means you can clean this out or even replace it if you wanted to. Inside you're going to have, let me just quickly zoom in, we're going to have access to the memory. This is a data memory inside here. So if you wanted to upgrade your memory, you could do. You can maximize this to 96 gigabytes. It's DDR5, 5600 megahertz speed, and it's dual channel, so dim uh, memory, which is pretty decent. And it's made by ADATA, as you can see right here. Now, the actual drive in this one is a maximum four terabyte slot. That means the drive will take four terabytes each. There's two of them. They are M.2 2280. And again, you could upgrade this if you wanted to. This has a one terabyte drive in here. This is a crucial drive. It's got the sticker on there and I'll check that a little bit later on. It's only a one terabyte drive. So you could upgrade this to a four terabyte at this stage. And if I was gonna be having this myself, I would definitely put a four terabyte in there. And there's also another slot here, which is also an M.2 2280 slot, which I would also put a drive in and populate both of these drives. So this has dual cooling fans on it, one on the top and one underneath here for the CPU. The CPU is the Ryzen 8845HS. That's eight cores, 16 threads at 54 watts TDP. This also has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and it supports four screen display, which is really nice. So I'm not gonna plug in the ethernet cable. I'm gonna reinstall Windows, and that's normally the second thing I would do if I bought a brand new uh, mini PC. So I've just got some power here. I've already created my bootable uh, Windows media by downloading this from uh, Microsoft, and I've already added in my uh, tweak file that I like to use on the system. So let's go ahead and plug that in the front. Now, all I need to do here is make sure uh, the secure boots off because I'm using Ventoy and that will need to have secure boot turned off. And I wanna make sure that I'm booting to that USB flash drive. Now remember, I haven't booted this up yet. That means the Windows operating system hasn't 
had a chance to configure itself and boot up to the main desktop. What we're gonna do is completely erase all of the information on that drive. Now, a lot of people have asked about whether you can reinstall Windows on these and whether the drivers are missing. And the short answer to that is sometimes drivers are missing and sometimes they get downloaded and installed by Windows updates. But I'll go through the process here and show you. So I'm going to be booting to our media and I've got Ventoy here, but you'll probably have just a normal Windows uh, bootable USB flash drive that you've created from Microsoft and you can download those for free. They're on the website. Just search for Windows 11 download, but I'm going to use my uh, unattended file inside my Windows media because that's going to remove all the bloatware and also disable all of the privacy concerns that you might have. When I boot up, I'm going to get to this screen right here. You can choose your language here. I'm going to leave that as United Kingdom English and we can click next. By reinstalling Windows, this will remove any fears of malware that might be on these mini PCs. I know there's no malware on here because I've scanned before all my mini PCs that I receive. I scan and there's only ever been one company and that was Ace Magic. All the other ones have been clean. So just want to be clear on that. So let's go to Windows 11 Pro because that is what's been installed on this mini PC. Another question I see quite a bit is they don't activate when you reinstall Windows. And the simple answer to that is yes, they do because they should uh, be tied to the hardware and it should automatically activate. And I'll show you that in this video. And I've never done it on this particular brand of mini PC before. So you're seeing it for the first time like I am. So what I'm going to do here is delete all of the partitions here. So if you ever need to reinstall Windows, you can. And I'm going to show you that it's possible. Now we might have a bit of an headache because I haven't installed the Ethernet cable, which is something they don't recommend. So you can end up with a local account. The problem with that is if you're not connected to the internet, that means the drivers might not come down from Microsoft and we could end up with having no drivers installed on our system. But I'll show you a way around that so you can always find drivers and I'll show you that in this video as well. So let's go ahead and delete all these partitions. I'm leaving the low, lower two because they are my USB flash drive and we're going to go ahead and click next. Now this is a SSD USB flash drive, which means it's going to install Windows very, very quickly on this system. So what I'm going to do is click next here and it's going to go ahead and start to install Windows. Now I've not speeded this process up. It just will be pretty quick, but I'll skip through just so not to bore you to tears with the installation process. I'll show you this part here so you can see this is basically going to be the out of box experience. It's going to let you set up the keyboard layout and the region. I've already got all this set up in my auto unattended XML file on the actual ISO. And when I go through here, it's automatically going to skip all of the Microsoft account and make me uh, a local account. And I can do all this and it's going to remove all of the bloat from the system, put in a bunch of tweaks. And it's also going to, uh, you know, allow us to set this up the way I want it and it's going to be a clean system. So let me go ahead and put an, a username in here. You can use whatever you like. I'm just going to call this owner and we can continue by clicking on the next button. So let's go ahead and do that right here. It's going to ask for a password. I'm going to skip that part. But again, you can put a password in if you want to. So we should be now getting to the desktop and that should be done. And what we should see is a clean operating system. If there was malware on that operating system, it will be gone. All of that black prompt screen was just the settings being added. And you can now see it's all done. It's finished. The unfortunate part is we had no internet connection at that stage. And that means we don't have any drivers. This is another common problem that a lot of people are worried about and complain about because they don't want Microsoft accounts. But unfortunately, if you disconnect the Ethernet cable, you are going to end up with no drivers like this. And you could end up causing yourself a lot of problems like I have, because now we have no Ethernet controller, which is no uh, Ethernet uh, actual driver on the system. But luckily enough, we do have a Wi-Fi driver and it has installed. Now, normally you would get one of two 
either the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet. But if you get none, you would have to use another computer to be able to download the software to install the drivers. And that's unfortunate, but that's something that could happen if you pull your Ethernet cable out on these mini PCs during the installation, because now it can't download the drivers. Now, this is not ASUS or MSI or any of these other manufacturers where you can go to the website and download all the drivers. And this is where some people might find it difficult. But don't worry, I'll show you how we can go about fixing this. So the first thing you want to do is get Windows updates. As soon as you've installed Windows, get your Windows updates and install those. Now you can see one of my ones are greyed out and that's because uh, feature updates is going to be turned off. This will be manual up, manually updated by myself and it's now going to download all of these onto the system. Now if you're using a standard Windows installation, you might get some drivers coming down through the Windows updates and this will fix a lot of the problems so we're just going to let those come down and install and then we probably have to restart the pc and then once this is restarted we should be able to then download some software so i've just downloaded google chrome and you can download whatever you like on your pc whether you want google chrome firefox brave or any of the other ones out there but you can see here the device manager is still showing that we have drivers missing so let me quickly show you i'll do a quick scan here and you can see it doesn't find them and what we're going to do is we fully updated the system now so what we're going to have to do is download some software so snappy driver installer origin uh, which is made by glenn delahoy come down and what we need to do is download this snappy driver installer origin so let's go ahead and get that downloaded now, again, if this was a normal manufacturer like Asus, MSI or any of those, you could go to the manufacturer's website. But unfortunately, you can't do that with these mini PCs from China. So what we need to do is use this program. I'm going to use download indexes only. Highlighted it on the screen there. And once we've clicked on this one, what that's going to do is open up another window, which is this right here. So what we need to do here is I'm going to go into expert mode. And from here, it's going to give me a list of all of the drivers that are available. So you can select all drivers by clicking select all right here on the left hand side in red. Once you do this, it's going to download all of the drivers that are available for you. And some of them you can see are not installed on here. So we need to download these and get them installed on the PC. So once you've selected all of these, click on install right here, just above select all and it's then going to install all of the drivers on the system. So you can see there's quite a few, but I reinstalled those and rebooted the PC. Let's have a look at the device manager, and all of the drivers are back installed on the PC. No issues whatsoever. You can see they're all solved, and we've got no problems. So that's how you can get all the drivers back installed on a PC if they're missing. Even if you had the Ethernet cable out, there's still a way of doing it. The only thing you've got to be careful of is you make sure you have some sort of network driver. So you can see these are the stats for the actual drive because I did say I wanted to show you what drive was in here. So I'm going to just quickly show you that right here. And again, you can see the power on count has had 25 power on counts. It is a crucial P3 plus SSD NVMe uh, drive. That's what's actually in here. It's a one terabyte drive. I'll do a speed test for you. And this is another thing that I like to do. I like to test the actual machine to make sure it's fully functional. If there's any issues, I would then send it back if there was a problem. But you can see you've got the read and write scores there, sequential reads and the sequential writes. So you can see right there. Next, I would test the temperatures of the actual mini PC to make sure it's working properly and there's no issues. So I'll just run CPU Z and there you can see all of the specifications of the CPU, the memory and also the graphics. And it does have uh, AMD Radeon 780M graphics, which is pretty decent for an onboard graphics, uh, which will play some games at 1080p and some games at 720p, depending on what game you're trying to play. So you can see we're getting some red there, which is the temperature because we're stress testing the CPU and the temperature is 91.5 
92.1 and it sort of stabilizes around about 93. There is no thermal throttling while this was happening, so it's running at its normal uh, temperatures for that particular CPU. Single core score was 2,596 and the multi core score was 12,703. You're probably never ever going to torture that system the way I did there to get up into the 93 Celsius. Now for the GPU score, it's 31,221 and that is on Geekbench 6. If you're interested in some other benchmark scores here, you can see max FPS 44.3. But this video was what to do uh, first when you buy a mini PC. And you can see it's looking nice and clean. Everything's working properly as it should. So hopefully this answers all your questions. That's basically what I would do if I bought a mini PC. I would then go off and install the software that I needed for the system. And you can make an image of this system. Uh, and then you won't have to go through all of that ever again. So if you had any concerns about what was on that Windows system, you can wipe it by doing this. So the activation state, you can see it's reactivated with no problems at all. So hopefully we can now use our computer, go and download all the stuff we need and use it as you would. It's been debloated. There's all the settings have been set the way I like it and it should be good to go. I hope this answers all your questions. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. Links in the video description. Bye for now.